Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Acclamation County. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take up consent items, but I understand there may be a few more that would people like to bring on. Great. Five, six, and seven. That a, all right with everybody? Any, any questions, discussion? Okay. If not, all those in favor of moving five, six, and seven on. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have. You're right. Is there anyone in the audience here to speak in opposition to either five, six, or seven? Oh, or one or this two. This is to or move items to the Yeah, but we're just moving it on right now. Uh, yes, uh, my name is uh, Jim LaRue. Uh, the second item on the consent is something that we would like to have some discussion about. And I understand that, that, that you want that withdrawn, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, five, six, and seven. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Acclamation. Yeah. And Tim, I understand you want to remove two. Is that right? It's Jim. Jim. Jim, I'm sorry, Jim. Yes, that's right. Okay. All right, we're going to remove two. This is our motion to approve the consent items on the agenda. CJ, by committee. <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Thank you, acclamation again, Kathy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take up number two. Eric, are you presenting on that one, sir? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Item two is a site plan under the C3B design guidelines, uh, right at the corner of East 3rd Street and East Walnut Street. I'm going to zoom in because it's small parcel there. This is the building on that corner uh, right now. The, the cafe would occupy this lower portion of the building. This fenced area is also part of the uh, property that we're uh, dealing with here. So if you look in the aerial, there's actually the building and then this open area to the west of the building. Uh, this is a view down to the north, uh, down East 3rd Street, look, looking north along the sidewalk streetscape. Uh, that's kind of zoomed back looking at the same area. You can see there's this area off the alley that comes back into the open area. Uh, this is the streetscape in front of the open area. And then this shows you what's going on. Kind of, there's a, another fence. So the, the open area is kind of carved into two areas. One being the kind of a closed in area with the fence. And then this area here, where the, there's gravel. There's two balconies. There's one that's hard to see behind there. One of the balconies goes into the, is in the fenced area. One of them is. One of them's in the back here. It's only viewable from the alley. The staff uh, recommendation incl includes requiring pavement of that area as parking uh, based on it being used as parking. Um, that may, that it, my understanding is that is the issue. There, you should have gotten the site plan in your packet um, one of the things they've agreed to do since the staff report went out is they are open to making this a Class A with planters here on the East 3rd Street side. My understanding is they are indicating that this uh, electrical conduit underneath the sidewalk prevents them from feasibly making another tree planter bed. Uh, to the west of the of the one that they're proposing along uh, East Walnut Street. So that was another thing I wanted to point out. So at this point, the staff recommendation uh, under the, the design guidelines for the C3B district and the, the uh, downtown uh, overlay guidelines, uh, compliance with the administrative review comments, 
provision of the Class A sidewalk uh, with one tree per li 30 lineal feet along um, East 3rd Street, provision of a second planter bed along East Walnut, which they've argued again that uh, this is not possible due to the conduit for them. Um, that the site plan should be amended at any point in time when the outdoor, if an outdoor patio is proposed. Right now there isn't anything proposed. Uh, the site plan shall provide at least one bike rack in the East Walnut Street right away with, an, with its placement approved by uh, traffic and transportation division. Any refuse container, collection container that's visible from the public street shall be screened by a permanent enclosure constructed with masonry and steel gates. My understanding is right now there's the only con container is out of view from the public street at the time being, but if there's any point in time that that should be visible, uh, then it would need to be enclosed and gated according to the, the zoning ordinance. Eric, don't we require paving on all parking areas in yes. the city? Yes. So is he arguing that it's not a parking area? Um, I don't know what the, ar the argument is other okay. than we're, we're recommending a condition that any off-street parking area be paved and striped. If it's not parking, then it probably should be restored then uh, and not. Because right now, as a gravel kind of surface, it invites itself for parking. Because I recall we, the city of Des Moines even had a piece of property on Court Avenue that we had to pave because, for that very reason, because it was not paved. And, and, and uh, as soon as I read this other, I'll go over, I, I can speak to that. Okay. The last thing I wanted to point out, the signage shall be in accordance with the C3B district regulations. With regard to the parking, this site plan is really one of the only mechanisms to gain compliance with parking that's not paved. Um, there's probably numerous examples throughout the city where parking is not paved, but when we have a site plan process, that's our opportunity, and that's the mechanism we have to get compliance. So that's what, why we're recommending that any off-street parking area be paved. Is there any questions at this point? Eric, I had a question about staff recommendation number four. The site plan shall be amended at any time, then an outdoor patio is proposed. What does that mean? That. It should say that and out. Oh, that, okay. That. Any time, that and, okay, thank you. And at this time, nothing is proposed, but um, we want it to be clear that, and we see this with uh, restaurants and taverns that they will find their business successful and that people want to start enjoying themselves outdoors and uh, sometimes that tend to, tends to happen just by itself without any kind of review process so we just wanted to put them on notice any other questions Mike did you have something you want to bring up Eric uh, once again just to confirm uh, the screening requirement is only if it's from a public street or is it public right-of-way because the alley uh, runs behind this. I know we've gotten some questions in East Village from recently about dumpsters, grandfather dumpsters not being screened. I could review the code section, but my understanding was that it was street. Okay. So maybe while the applicant yeah. speaks, maybe if you can confirm that, okay. just double check. Thanks, Eric. Do you have anything else before we get started uh, on that? Unless there's more questions. Is the applicant present? Please come forward. Give us your name and address. Thank you. My name is uh, Jim LaRue. I'm one of the owners. Uh, the owner of the property is uh, MSL JCL LC, which is uh, the, the initials of my spouse and myself. I'm the JCL. Uh, we're, uh, our permanent residence is Iowa City uh, and uh, moved here. Uh, it was a part of the, uh, of the Culver administration and uh, purchased this building to be close to the Capitol, and it was certainly uh, convenient there. Uh, but also interested in this. Uh, uh, it, it's probably a fatal attraction, but I've, I, I really support historic <laughs> preservation and uh, uh, have done a lot of that in Iowa City, uh, where I have a law practice, and then uh, since uh, the Culver administration ended, have law offices in Iowa City and in, uh, in Des Moines. And something about this, this property, uh, I, I want you to know that our suggestions are intended to be friendly. We, we really support what East Village is doing. We want to be good neighbors. Well, we're trying to be that way, but I uh, want to bring uh, to your attention what may be unintended consequences. And um, I think over onerous uh, application of, of the rules to 
what we're trying to do with, with this property. Uh, this property is actually two properties that are joined exactly in the middle. The property is uh, uh, 22 feet wide and 110 feet uh, long. And uh, the intended change of use applies to the downstairs part of the northerly half. So it's one quarter of this uh, building which has any change of use at all. And it's not change, uh, a drastic change. It was a ar landscape, uh, landscape architectural firm when I purchased the building. Uh, and they moved because they were uh, too successful there. And, and it's been vacant since. This is uh, one of these things where it's been hard to find a good tenant, and what we thought would be a good and vital tenant for East Village, who in a time of uh, difficulties, one proposed left, another, another trying to borrow money. We finally have a tenant who I think is largely self-financed, uh, who intends to put a, a vegan uh, restaurant there, which I think would be a, a terrific addition uh, to East Village. But it's low intensity use. The maximum occupancy is 30, is 30 persons. And to uh, the, the one surprise, I don't hold the city of Des Moines responsible for any of the maintenance issues that an owner of a property brings on oneself buying an old building. The northerly half was built in the 1870s, the southerly half in the 1920s. The southerly half is where I live, upstairs and downstairs. The northerly half is an apartment upstairs. And, and this commercial space, which is the subject of, of the site review, or what brought this to you, is the only thing that's being uh, changed. Here are the three things that have been a burden to these owners, which are unex unexpected uh, uh, burdens and probably not intended by anyone at the city of Des Moines. The, the pressures on the sewer system in this part of town are, are extraordinary, uh, such that what I bought, what I thought was a dry basement, has been filled with sewage water to a level of six feet twice since I've been there, because the, the sewage that runs down uh, Walnut Street and combined city and sanitary sewer. I mean, that, uh, since owning this in five years, I've replaced the furnaces, the air conditioners, the uh, water heater for the entire complex twice at my own expense. I've cleaned it down twice at my own expense. More recently, and this is probably where the rub is, and so uh, it, it's uh, one reason that I'm here, is that you'll see the north uh, east part where you have the curving and around. Uh, uh, we had tremendous problems there with the sidewalk shifting within the last two years and could not figure out what it was. Uh, what it ended up being was that there was a hole in the curb before it got to the, to the manhole so that even in light rains, the water would rush down and go down in a hole, come under the sidewalk, and then was coming into my basement uh, from the north side. So even in light rains, I was getting water perforations through the, uh, uh, through the basement. And we had scheduled so that we could accommodate uh, Adam, who has a great idea, to repave and resurface that northeasterly part, which we did. And within three weeks, we finished at an expense to us of $12,500. And it was then, after we were just about done, the last day of paving, that it was brought to our attention that we might want to have a, a planter, which we did. We then expanded the, the concrete work to put in the planter uh, that is, is there so we could conform with the overall design. But any, any thought that any planter could go easterly, it would be impossible. I'm afraid of penetrating. The manhole is right in front of us, and I've seen water come over the manhole, uh, come, having water come into these, any of these uh, uh, treed areas and, and penetrating our basement again would be a worry. Uh, but the other uh, a part of this, there are two objections. One is, is, is now the time to enforce on us another tree uh, planting, uh, additional sidewalk, uh, where we have still 44 by 110 feet that are unchanged uh, in terms of use. That's a vacant lot that sometime I'd love to develop in a way that enhanced each village, but this is not a part of this project. And the second, is it, is it reasonable to impose uh, lineal improvements all the way down uh, East, east uh, 3rd Street in order to accommodate a change in use, which is just the top half? And then third, uh, we bought this pro uh, property where there was a use, an existing use of cars parking in the back. That's where the people from the landscape architects uh, parked as, as a courtesy not to the public but to employees who were, who were there. And that's been the use there. It's, it's gravel, it's low intensity. But to put a lot of money into a parking space when the overall intent in the long run is to make better use of that entire vacant lot. Um, it seems that on the whole, after having a vacant property there for two and a half years, not for a lack of trying but for a lack of, of tenants, Adam, to him, he's paying a lot of rent from an owner's standpoint. It's not much rent. <laughs> you know how these things go. Um, and uh, is this, a, is this uh, entirely necessary in order to accommodate this site to get this property uh, up and running so that we can have a vegan 
uh, uh, restaurant uh, and sandwich shop on the northeast corner, which I think otherwise would be very good. Can my wife and I afford to do it? We probably can, but I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's reasonable, a reasonable request that, uh, to use the resources. What I would propose, and, and uh, uh, one in the question is, is it necessary to have all these things completed before an occupancy permit is, is allowed? Is it possible we could have a time frame or over a period of, uh, of some frame or uh, a reasonable frame of time, a couple of years to, to do these things? And, and then third, is it necessary for a use which has been accepted by the city for a long period of time on the parking to impose paving of a parking area in the back where the, the use has been otherwise for a, a very long period of time, uh, uh, maybe forever <laughs> in terms of recent history? So those are our, uh, those are our objections and we'd, we'd ask that you consider uh, 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 an alternative to what's been planned by the staff. Eric, I think he asked a question about whether or not it can be phased in or... I'm not sure that a, a complete certificate of zoning compliance can be issued until, until the requirements are met. Okay. But I know that we've, there's been situations where we've done temporary um, it's not preferable from an enforcement standpoint. Uh, I think if, if you did something of that nature, you would be, want some clear uh, scheduling on the plan that you approve so that we have something that we can uh, enforce over time and make sure that they're meeting these steps um, as time goes on. Uh, how date makes it easier is, for our enforcement side. How, how date certain does the proposal have to be? I'm sorry? How date certain does the proposal have to be? I mean, when we do things on PUDs, for example, we usually like month and year, you know. Okay. Um, Eric, how long is a building permit good for? Building One year? permits are good for a year and they can be extended. Um, so could we not point. tie it to the building permit, the length of the building permit issuance and, or somehow and yeah. maybe any extension? I think the clear thing is, is I don't think we can do a permanent certificate of zoning compliance until they're all met. So right. if that's critical to their financing or anything like that, then um, that would be an issue. Yes, sir. Jack? Two things. One, uh, Jim, did I hear you say you live in this uh, uh, facility, or at least part of it, when you're uh, in Des Moines uh, yes. providing legal services? That's true. Uh, two to three days a week, I'm in the southerly half of the building. And then the second thing is, it appeared to me, just from the photos and I should be more familiar with how we can just look out the window, but uh, <laughs> this building's been rehabbed once before you got there by an architecture firm. Yes. Was there a site plan approval process involved then? And if so, was this uh, concrete uh, parking lot provision? The C3B important? hasn't been in place for very long. So the previous uh, renovations would likely have been prior to the C3B zoning of the area, which have, has triggered the site plan coming in front of the Plan and Zoning Commission. Mr. Chairman. Ted. Um, do, does the uh, gravel lot figure into the parking ratio for the restaurant? There's no requirement. The, the, the key here is if it's going to be used as parking, where staff is saying it should be paved. Now, maybe they only park two cars back there, then they need to pave an area for two cars. Um, the other area should be restored, would be the way we would look at that. So what if Jim and his wife park each of their cars back there? Two, two parts. And, and customers don't. Then I think, like I said, if they are, let's say they're only going to park two cars, then, then make a parking area for two cars. And, and restore the remainder area that, so that it can't be parked upon. So what I hear is that if the resident who currently occupies the premises for residential purposes and owns the building, parks his personal vehicle there, and his wife comes to town and visits and parks her personal vehicle there, if there's a restaurant in the front half of the lower section of the building, the owner is forced to pave the gravel lot. Well, again, as, as long as nothing is happening, of course, we're not going to enforce him to pave anything at this point. But this is our opportunity through the site plan process to gain compliance. So, yes. No, I was just pointing out something I thought was a little ridiculous. Okay. Well, 
And well, the purpose of the site plan, uh, when we adopted the site plan regulations for East Village, was to gain compliance with these issues. Um, and I recognize that they're only renovating a portion of the building, but as was pointed out, the remainder of the building has already been renovated at a prior time. So this is very likely our one and only chance to get compliance on the site. Ted. Is there, um, is there an opportunity for compromise here with, um, and I see some, like the street tree and some of the planner stuff is subject to the planning administrator's discussion and you know, feasibility, um, which I think they're pretty reasonable. Uh, but is there something maybe with um, raised planter, uh, something that doesn't require a whole lot of paving um, to try to moderate some of the cost of the of the paved parking, I mean, would something like that be? Well, uh, actually, we uh, had suggested at least internally what you have right now. I know it doesn't conform with uh, other things, but we here we have a vegan restaurant moving in, and there's a garden right along uh, that east wall that that uh, uh, could be very appropriate for this kind of of use in terms of there being green or whatnot. Uh, I'd at least. Uh, uh, think that that might be something uh, uh, that could be. Do you have a, a picture of that, Eric? Of uh, that East Wall? Um, I know. Um, the. I have a closer one that's more more at an angle. Uh, this is this is taken from the uh, uh, south. It's getting too thick. That's taken from the south. So the the change of use is on the northerly. Uh, part one one possible compromise could be since the change of use is only the northerly 55 feet am I being required to pave more more than that uh, this is actually underground parking or first floor uh, uh, parking which makes this property rather uh, unique are we are we to redo that uh, uh, as a result of changing the use of the of one quarter in the front I'm not I'm not certain what why that's a, a, an issue um, and uh, so there, there, there are possibilities there. The other is, is this could be uh, conformed over a period of, uh, of some reasonable amount of time uh, would be the other suggestion. Um, That's what we were talking about earlier, Ted. Yeah. Joanne? Are you having to put in the new grease trap? Yes, it's a part of the, the, the uh, tenant is, is requiring putting in a new grease, grease trap, yes. Okay, because that is, Usually very, very expensive. It's, it's very expensive. Yeah. And um, this is, a, uh, to tell you how it works, this is a vegan restaurant. They have no grease. They, they have no animal protein. Yeah. <laughs> no, not, not even cream in the coffee, I ask, because I drink it that way. Yeah. But, but it's still there. And we're trying to comply, you know, with, with the world to be good neighbors. And that's, what is it? Uh, what, what size is it? Uh, how many gallon? It's a thousand gallon. A thousand yeah. gallon uh, grease yeah. trap is being installed to accommodate the. Well, my thought was, being that is such an expense, to go into this property, that being able to uh, comply incrementally over time would would sounds to me a, a reasonable thing to do. I've had a similar thing happen in a basement of my business um, with the the storm and sanitary sewers. Yes. Um, is that something that happens with? Uh, does it come back up through, or is it's it coming through the wall? Tre tremendous pressure. Uh, what happened the first time is it blew our floor drain out, and we. This is when the river was high, you know. And then we repaired that, and then it uh, the check valve blew out. I'm just hoping that you know it. it, oh, so it you have a check valve. We have a check valve, and, and uh, it, it blew through the check valve the second time, oh. and uh, so it's a. What what it means is in terms of use, I have to tell any tenant. To beware. It means I, I have to put all kinds of disclaimers, and and it probably limits the number of people who look at the property as, as being a place they want to be. The city does have a program for check valves. Yes. Yeah. I, I guess I have a just a technical question for Jim. Yes. We look at a staff recommendation. We have eight items on it, and I'm just wondering. Um, you said something about not wanting to pave necessarily all the sidewalk out front and so forth. If you can look at it and tell us which ones you disagree with so we can kind of get a better handle on which ones. We know the parking in the back, which is item seven. Right. It, what, what I would uh, propose is that, that we uh, not be required to put another planter up 
uh, on Walnut Street. I mean, yeah. So you're showing one and you don't want another one. We have one now. We put one in because we, we scooted it in when we heard that there was an issue here. Since we were paving, we stopped our paving process and put one in. So there's one there. And as I'm understanding the recommendation is to put yet another. So that's item three, provision of a second planter bed and street tree along Walnut. So that you don't want to do either, okay? Right. What I would propose is if, is if the westerly 44 feet is developed, it may be made subject to this. Uh, I'd be happy to, but this is, that's still an empty lot. There's no change of use there. Okay. And uh, what I would propose is that we consider are there other ways that are less expensive that even would use what is here in a way that the city would think is reasonable for a vegan restaurant being uh, the tenant. Could we see the first year of operation whether there's something we could do there that would be in conformity of the spirit of, of uh, the city plan uh, that they might think was a great idea that we just haven't had a chance to do yet. So could we avoid at least for year one paving on East 3rd Street and, and see if we could do it in a way that the city thought that's, that's a great idea, that fits in with East Village. And then finally, could we avoid requirement of paving parking area in the back? So for item two, you want some time to take care of. And you want item three, not, not to do item three, which is the second planter, and item seven, paving in the back. Um, the rest of the items you can live with. I and see. since I didn't bring it up with me, could you just do it with yeah. can you show it? Eric, can you show him? I mean, I don't know how to make a, make a motion if we don't know what we're motioning for. Yeah, good, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'll get one I, was, I was going to um, get back to you on the refuse collection container too first. Um, it is the enclosure shall completely screen the receptacle from any street or PUD or PBP district. So, um, and that's in uh, 12, section 1276 T3 of the chapter 134 of the zoning ordinance. So, so where does that leave it? So does that no, mean we're open? Well, as long as the receptacle is not visible from the street. It's blocked by the fence. Right. So if the thing is, is over time things happen, this restaurant becomes a hamburger restaurant. They don't want the fence. You know, things change over time. And so we have to, I think, have some of these things in our recommendation and in our site plan so that people are put on notice when things change over time. Okay. Jim, do you understand Greg's questions? If, if Greg could ask just by number, because I didn't remember them by number. Well, um, you would like item two to be uh, deferred, if you will, some leeway for time. On East 3rd. On East 3rd. Yes. And the second planter along East Walnut, you can't do it because of an electrical line or it's in front of the empty lot, so yes. you'd like that one not to happen. True. And item seven, you don't want to be required to pave the off-street parking area in the rear. True. And the rest of those items you're okay with? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Joanne. Just a design thought. Um, where the second planter may go. Yes. You can't go down into the ground. And there's all of these marvelous little bike rack sculptures through the East Village. Could something like that go there instead? Would that be your thought? or? Uh, well, or that too, but he's got to put in a bike rack. We have four pots right now, and, and they, it's a great program. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It, yeah. I mean, if, if they decide he needs a bike rack, that's yeah. what the recommendations are. A bike rack, I think, is great. It attracts more customers. I want these guys to succeed. That seems like a reasonable thing. Well, if that would be a, a, an appropriate substitute, and it would balance things you've got two things in that space maybe that's what they were looking for in the first place was a bit of uh, design balance yeah I think we want to look at the design of it itself if the footings or whatever have the same issue with the electrical conduit yeah it, we'd it have looks to lo like we'd have to look out for something like that sure. yeah it looks like it goes right through the little space something where that we the would have to evaluate it, the exact placement of may not be exactly where the plan would go, but would, that would be an okay alternative then to your requirement? I'm not going to change anything right here, but certainly the commission can yeah. evaluate that. 
But Eric, they could certainly put a pot in there and they get the same sort of thing as a, as a concrete planter is that. I think we can look at it as yeah, an alternate yeah, compliance. I think there's numerous examples of things like that around the yeah. village. We're willing to look at it as an alternate compliance. Mm -hmm. CJ? I'm, I'm just wondering, this uh, property has some stormwater issues right now, and we're requiring him to put in more, more concrete instead of impervious. I mean, it, it seems like we're talking out of both sides of our mouth here. And I don't know if there's pavers or something that could be handled at because if you're going to put concrete in there, you're going to have more runoff. Mm -hmm. And my second thought was maybe your restaurant owner would like a, a big herb garden someplace yes. so you could do a big circle herb garden. We, we talked about that as being something we could do along that uh, east edge. It, it, it absorbs it the morning sun, the bricks capture it. I think you could do something, and the plants grow very well there. Right. Uh, and, and we talked about that as a possibility. Any other questions? Do you have anything else? Uh, no, only to say how truly I'm impressed by how well the city of Des Moines works. This is a contentious thing, perhaps, uh, you know, for a large city. Uh, and when I brought this issue of the of the water, when we finally discovered what ha why water was coming down. Your city streets people there within 24 hours, they were putting asphalt over. I got no problems with the city. I'm just trying to bring some to your attention. I want this thing to work, and, and I'm, I'm really quite impressed by, uh, uh, by how things work here. And I'm sorry, my first presentation here is one that looks like it's contentious. It's, it's really intended to find some consensus rather than contention. And uh, I, I really am impressed how things work here in New Orleans. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the application? In favor of the application, please come forward. Seeing none, anyone here to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward. Likewise, seeing none. Jim, you need any rebuttal time for your... <laughs> I, I'm going I'm to go ahead and close the public hearing. <clears throat> we have a motion. Okay. Can, can I just can I make one comment? Go ahead, Jim. Motion. The, we have, we have gravel parking lots all over the city that we would like to see paved. And I'll bet within the next month somebody's going to be here in front of us and, and we're going to insist that they pave their parking lots. So um, I understand the comment about the, uh, the stormwater, um, and it makes perfect sense to me. Um, and I. I just I understand where, where Mike and, and staff is coming from. This is going to be our only opportunity to get it to get it paved. I I don't think I'd vote against it if we uh, if we said not to. But uh, this is going to come. Something like this will be back in front of us shortly, and we're going to want to see it paved. So we better have a pretty good reason why we don't want to do it here. Greg, before you move on, Eric, I had a question. It doesn't actually require paving, right? It just requires a dust-free surface, as I recall. The, the, the actual parking and maneuvering would re require a durable pavement, so okay. asphaltic or Portland cement concrete. Okay. If this was like storage in an industrial area, then we'd go with a dustless surface. Okay. Um, again, the, if, if they're only parking two cars, though, that's the only portion that would, I mean, we're not asking them to pave that entire thing as a parking lot. We're, just saying whatever's going to be parking needs to be paved. The other area should be restored, restored and, you know, so that people won't park on them. Because here's what's the restaurant becomes a success, even though it's a long walk around the building. Uh, we know how restaurant parkers are. They yep. fill everywhere in, in the area, so um, they will use it. So if they chose to plant trees in what is now purportedly a gravel parking lot, that'd be cool. Yeah. They could convert that to open space. Um, you would probably have some to throw, bring yeah, or throw soil out. and see it and uh, landscape it however they want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That might help with yeah. yeah. Joanne. Um, I'm thinking also that the grade of the uh, parking, if they did any amount of it, could be graded so that the water runs to oh. the south and off their property. If they were going to pave it, we'd evaluate the design through our engineering so that they would 
um, that if they were collecting any drainage, that they would have to um, pipe it to the, in this case, if they were doing two or three spaces that, and it got to the alley, the alley is an inverted crown that would carry the water to the street system. But. We're going to get back to you, Greg. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just I opened the door. What, what can I say? <laughs> Here we go. Yep. We're ready. We were stalling for you, actually. But. Move staff, except for the following. Item two, the provision of the Class A sidewalk along East 3rd. Um, we would add that we would allow them to take up to the length of a building permit to get that in compliance or however staff can figure out how that works. I'm thinking of a year since I heard that from Mike. So you just say for the length of one year, right? Wouldn't that be easier? Sure. Okay. No, no, you're talking about third right now. This is this one year or length of the building. Yep. Yeah. This is along East Third. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Number two. Good. And along Item three along East Walnut Street, um, in lieu of the planter, they could use a pots or one pot or something that staff can work out that it, that's acceptable. And item seven, uh, in order to get this off the table, I would like to say it, it needs to be paved if it's more than two parking spaces, but if it's just two, then they can leave it alone. Would they need to restore the balance to grass? Yes. And I don't know, we only saw one car parking in there. It's 22, 22 and a half feet wide or something. It doesn't park very many, so it seems like they could get two cars in there and have a lot more green space than they've got. But anyway, any more than two, they need to come up with a site plan for it. But they'd still have to restore the other area of yep. green space. Yep. Okay. Any questions? Good motion, by the way. And any, uh, any discussion? Well, you want to you want to give me a second? Okay. Will's going to give me a second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. One opposition. Vicky. Vicky. Did you say Christina? I thought she said Vicky. Vicky. Okay. To the motion. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Motion, by the way, carries. Item number three is a request from Strollo Development LLC represented by Jennifer Carney to rezone property located at 2919 Southeast 14th Street. The subject property is owned by Randall Boyd. Eric, are you presenting on this one? Thank you, sir. I'm not sure I have the correct file. I missed the last time this was in front of you, but uh, my understanding is that it was continued to allow uh, the applicant opportunity to revise their plan to do something that would exceed the minimum standard. And so that's been sent to you. Um, should be in your packet. Uh, they've added on the landscaping elements. They've added interior areas for landscaping. I'll let them um, describe that. If you, I've got photos if you need to see the area again, but otherwise I'll put those off to the side. Um, basically, based on the revised plan, staff reviewed it um, and still had a couple of um, recommendations. We do believe it would comply with the uh, 2020 community character plan if they met these conditions. Um, 
First of all, we would want provision of 27 foot minimum paving setbacks along Southeast 14th and East Lacona uh, frontages and 17 foot minimum paving setbacks along the South and East property lines. I believe they're showing these. We just want that to be uh, demonstrated or, or indicated on the plan. Uh, and then we also wanna make sure that they're providing <coughs> landscape materials in excess of the minimum requirements of the Des Moines landscaping uh, standards to be determined by this commission at site plan review. Um, in, the, in the staff report, if you recall, there is a deficiency, I think, of a few of the open space plannings. My understanding, and they'll uh, come up and speak to this, is that they have no issue with getting that uh, taking care of and adding plant material to exceed the standards. So um, if they can comply with those two, then we would recommend approval of the site plan. Mike? Eric, so just to confirm that the code requires them to exceed, basically have exceptional setbacks or landscaping to justify lifting the vehicle to display lot Correct. overlay. Correct. So and there, with those there, conditions, we would be, our, would be suggesting that they do do that. Correct, and the, the other thing I believe that doesn't really show up on a planting plan of the type that we use for site plan review is the grasses and things um, that they have done in the existing site. So that would count towards excessive material as well. So, so uh, Eric, on this site plan submitted here, it looked like they tried to tally the plants that they were proposing. Right, and what happened is when it's a site of this uh, magnitude, we don't give them double credit for the buffer yard area for the open space plantings. So that they calculated it based on that. And so they were, they were short an entire set of um, open space counts, which they have this area along the south. They're not actually required to have a buffer yard here, but they have space to accommodate those additional plantings and not overcrowd the site with landscaping. So um, I don't think it's gonna be any problem achieving that. So two weeks ago in reviewing the minutes, um, this owner was here and you didn't have enough information. We didn't have a site plan. We sent him back for a site plan and now correct. you're They've, okay with it with the conditions. Correct, correct, with just a few repairs, so to speak. And the site plan will come back to the commission if the vehicle display lot is lifted. Right. They'll still have to come to you with their actual site plan. So, Any questions? Is the applicant here, Eric? Yes. Uh, nobody came and got a response card. So no, okay. no response. Again, Chuck Bishop of Bishop Engineering, uh, 3501. 104th Street in Urbandale here tonight representing Strollo Development. Uh, as indicated, uh, we just kind of came back with a uh, conceptual uh, landscaping plan for this site. This one I have before you is actually just slightly different than the one that was uh, submitted that you probably have in your packet. What's, what we've done is taken out a little bit of green space here and expanded it down to, in this area because this is basically where our detention base is going to have to work. We, kind of, we tried to get a detention basin up in this area here, and it just didn't work with uh, elevation-wise. So we, this area at the north end, it got a little bit bigger, so we got a little bit more green space here. And uh, as Eric indicated, I think we we did double up count uh, on the uh, evergreen trees, so we were short 10 evergreen trees, and we would just be adding those along this south boundary here. There's an existing uh, residence slash business to the south here that's a... Uh, palm reader, I guess. So I mean, get your fortune told down here. Um, and so we would uh, be screening there, and then as Eric said, you know, we'd be having grasses and everything else. We proposed some, they already had some fountain grasses in there. We would add some additional fountain grasses in front of these units, but we have no problem with staff. Uh, we do show the 27 foot uh, setback along East 14th. A little bit greater than that here, and then 27 here, and then we have 17 foot around the rest of the site here on the east and south. So, uh, as Eric said, we'll be coming back, you know, if the overlay district is lifted, then we'll be coming back to a formal site plan with all the details for the uh, stormwater detention, paving details, and that type of thing will be coming before you shortly. So, I'd be happy to answer any questions right now. Any questions?
Uh, you mentioned, I know we're, we're in the, the preliminary stages, but you're, you mentioned screening f uh, to the house that's uh, to the south of it. Right. Uh, we're talking uh, wooden fence. Yes, we have a we have a six foot wood fence here, and as well along the east boundary, plus the addition of the trees. So, thank you, CJ. Um, I'd like to ask you a question about the plant material. Yes, I see that you have listed twenty four conifers or evergreens. Yes, and there is a real serious problem of them surviving okay. in the city, in the state, in the Midwest right now. And you might want to reconsider that recommendation because they'll be replanting, replanting. Which kind of trees are you the looking? Ever, the conifers and the evergreens. Ever All the evergreens. Required. All the evergreens are required by. So the landscape standards still currently require a mix that includes evergreens and deciduous plantings. So, until the landscape standards are amended, we would still be requiring that. They're in the process of reviewing it. it. That change may occur before this comes back. I, I don't know, but we'll, we'll review it against the current standards. Yeah. So both have to, we'll comply with whatever standards they have. If we can get away with not having the evergreens, that's fine, because I know, I know what you're saying. So what, yeah. CJ, what seems to happen, especially along Southeast 14th, it's always the salt that when, when they run down the, the mm -hmm. hill with those trucks, they just push in the salt right into the... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it kills everything along that uh, part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it is sad because you see brown dead pine trees, you know, all the way up and down the hill. And I don't know what the. And they just uh, maybe start recommending that you plant them in Iowa anymore. And as soon as we get those um, plants up to grade, they're going to be beneficial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you might, that might be an option. Yeah, we can look at that. I have not. We are not planting any evergreens along the street side here. Uh, one reason we have uh, over or overhead electric that runs along here, so we have to plant some lower type uh, overhead trees. Where uh, most of the trees along here will be a pear, a pear, a variety of pear tree. So, um, and then we're just looking at shrubs and grasses along there as well. That uh, will be more. Party, they'll handle some of that salt and abuse that they'll get from the snow removal. Any other questions? Do you have anything else? I don't. I think you can. Is there anyone here to speak? I'm going to open the public hearing. Anyone here to speak in favor of the application? Please come forward. Seeing none, anyone here in opposition to the application? Likewise, please come forward. Seeing none. I'm going to go ahead and close public hearing. Do I have a motion? So Mr. Okay. Chair, I, I, I will yeah. move staff. Uh, this neighborhood's not only uh, okay with this, they want this. They're really excited about it. This company has been in contact with them, and, and I think that they're going to show uh, a standard that uh, you know, we're real serious about our overlay, dis you know, our overlay district on Southeast 14th, and I, I think they're quite aware of that, and I think they're going to set a standard that uh, we like to see. So. Okay. Joanne? Just to comment, uh, knowing that the um, neighborhood is for this, these people have presented a rather uh, nice plan so far and everything. Um, the um, vehicle display overlay is my baby. I am not going to vote against this, but I'm not going to vote for it either because of that, and I'll just abstain. So, okay. just a comment. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and call it to the vote. Those all, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Okay, down hands, opposed, me. And Joanne's seen. It passes. Thank you. Thank you.
just to clarify that that'll go to the council for a hearing uh, they would not be setting the hearing until Eric it'd be the first meeting of October it's where they'd set the hearing for the second meeting of October thank you okay moving right along item number four request from Jeff Nick Nicholson to rezone property located at 909 East 27th Street Eric, you're presenting on that one? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. <coughs> and while we're, uh, I should mention, as I'm presenting this, the, the actual parcel that's being considered for rezoning is part of an overall site that's been in use for quite some time. So uh, this is really just to accommodate some expansion that has already occurred. Um, zoning enforcement has had it under um, enforcement action up till now. In fact, this area might provide a better picture of it. And there you can see the gold line here that is the zoning boundary so the property in question is this property right in here um, they the owner of this can't even request this use on the property at this time because the way our zoning ordinance is set up uh, they must first seek rezoning before even the board of adjustment can consider allowing it so um, that's what's why it's here in front of you at this point in time. The applicant did give us a, a sketch of how these areas would be proposed to be used. Um, and I'll let them explain it even more detail, but uh, there's kind of a, a tiering of how they uh, use their storage for their business and it's very seasonal in nature uh, from my understanding. So um, things are there parts of the year and other parts of the year they won't use these areas necessarily. Things come in, they're crated. Um, they've put rock in the back, which generally in our industrial areas where we allow the outdoor storage, um, that isn't even a, a permitted material. So I wanted to point that out. But in, in these zoning districts, there's actually no standard, but we you could expect that staff would recommend uh, anything that was allowed for outdoor storage through the Board of Adjustment to uh, adhere to a similar standard that we would apply in an industrial area. This is looking more at the north edge of the site where um, they did get permission through the board uh, to have this merchandising out in the front with their uh, lawn care. Uh, equipment and vehicles and so that's they've been to the board on a few things another one is the electronic sign uh, that you see here in the picture I'm going to pass around a letter that came from the fairground neighborhood association yeah, oh, you I think everybody has a copy Bert uh, Dross who had worked on this particular item I wanted me to make sure that I, I did it. that so <laughs> And then I'll give you the consent. Um, this is one of the one of the properties owned by the property owner. And then there's three that are two that were in uh, favor, and then one in opposition. I'm passing around. Uh, at this time, in staff's review of this, uh, our general concern is is somewhat with imposing um, what we know is going to be the proposed use. Uh, and this rezoning would uh, facilitate that at this point. Um, extending outdoor storage is not something that's very consistent with the intent or the standards in our zoning ordinance when we have commercial areas adjoining residential areas. So um, our viewpoint and our uh, concern surrounds those factors. Um, so at this time, staff is recommending denial of this request I did want, again, as I pointed out, 
they will have additional remedy um, to go in front of the Board of Adjustment if there's uh, where the Board of Adjustment can evaluate every little aspect of what they're proposing and put conditions uh, as well if they so uh, deem ne uh, necessary. But at this time, staff's recommending not to approve the zoning. We think that would be inappropriate to impose upon the neighborhood. Um, we don't think it's in conformance with the Des Moines 2020 character plan either. So. Is there any questions? Yes. So just to clarify, we will turn it down if we agree with staff, and then they go to the Board of Adjustment for what? They would have the remedy. There's two things. If they Let's say you approve the rezoning. They are still going, in order to allow outdoor storage, they would need to go to the Board because that's, even in the zoning they're requesting, it's not a a permitted activity so they would have to seek variance of that provision on the property if they were just limiting it to the area that's already zoned commercially they could go to the board right now and ask for a variance to that provision about prohibiting outdoor storage um, but the fact that they need this additional area um, they uh, you know we advise them if you really want to you know get approval for the whole area then the first step would be to seek rezoning so that you would, if they gave you the zoning, you had the standing to request the variance. Um, if you didn't get the zoning, then you would also have standing to seek a use variance. Okay. So there's kind of two paths that it might result in depending on how the commission would act. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Eric, is the applicant here? Yes. Please come forward, give us your name and address. Good evening, uh, Jeff Nicholson, owner of PMP Small Engines 2715 East University. I own the property 909 as well as 913, which is uh, the green, uh, which is right here as well. Um, I am here seeking rezoning. Um, it's kind of a two, uh, for two different reasons. One, I would like to operate as we've been operating. Um, we are very seasonal, uh, and we do about 60% of our business in four months. So we have a ton of inventory in, in March, April, May. It starts thinning out. Right now there's maybe two created mowers, three created mowers back there, and the, uh, the property that uh, we're seeking rezoning on doesn't have any equipment back behind there. Um, but I am seeking rezoning to try and get in compliance with the city. Uh, I'm trying to work with the city on this. Uh, but I do have a longer term vision. Um, I want to expand and to add on to the building uh, that is on 2715. And with the setbacks and that, I, I need to be able to get into the property of 909 to have adequate space so that we can have a showroom. Um, we do show mowers out front. Uh, it is not the handiest when the weather is not cooperating. We don't have much of a showroom inside. Um, we have a great business there. We bought it nine years ago. It's been there since 1976 with the previous owner. Um, we were very fortunate. We were, we were uh, able to grow the, to double the business within about three years, and we we were about bursting at the seams before we doubled the business. It, it's just we're doing what we can. But um, ideally, I would have liked to have been here two years ago to try and rezone that and, and already have a building. But the last two years have been kind of tough. The last year we haven't had any moisture <laughs> as far as snow or uh, rain to grow the grass. So I am here seeking rezoning so that I can operate as I, as I am for now. But my vision is to have a building there so that I don't have outside storage. Any questions? Christine? Um, the letter that we received from the Fairground Neighborhood Association, um, they've, they've met with you, I'm assuming. Or 
Yes, we had our uh, our neighborhood meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, we had quite a turnout. There was about 14 people there, and most of them were from uh, the neighborhood association. I showed them around. They supported us, and and I um, I don't know which letter you have. I talked to Sharon today, and she had updated it today. This is dated 916 of 12. It says Fairground Neighborhoods okay with improvements to 2715 University PMP small engine per city requirements. We would like him to put up a screen possibly or privacy fence to protect his inventory from people who would try to steal it and also to prevent any more complaints from neighbors. That's that's the updated okay. one. Okay. Just want to she they added the they would they added the privacy fence or screen since the first letter that went out so would you be okay with that I am okay with that I, I completely understand that it was on my list of things to do but it was it just never got done okay. thank you that's all uh, I, I also have one other thing I, I was looking down through the 2020 community character plan and and I see the five goals the sustainability goals and I also noticed that um, it states that uh, it can't be based on any one of the five goals in exclusion to the others. And, and looking through the goals, um, one of the big ones is to promote a wide approach to development, establishing the neighborhood as a unit of planning. And, and I do have the neighborhood behind me. Um, also to promote economic growth and efficiency. And uh, I know that we just don't, won't have the capability to grow without any more space where we're at. That house, the red house that is uh, the gentleman who's against the zoning, him and the previous owner have a history. I have tried to buy his property. It's a rental. Uh, he does not want to sell it. He won't sell it. Um, I've been a good neighbor. I've helped him move stuff out of that rental. Um, we've moved snow off that sidewalk for his renters. And um, he, he just does not want to sell that, that property to us. And, you know, I guess I can understand that to a point. He built that house a long time ago, and he's attached to it. So, But I, I don't see us getting that house. So that's why we're trying to get, we did uh, purchase the other two houses and are trying to expand that direction, so. Um, so if, if I'm understanding, the, the photographs that we saw with your crated mowers and, and that sketch of what you currently do on the sites isn't necessarily what your bigger vision is that you want to add on to your building, would you still use um, this property for that outdoor storage or would there be some other, would something else happen in, if you could expand your building? I can't see there not being a need for some storage. The, the, the crates, the pile of crates that we get, and they're returnable now, it, they used to be disposable, which was a lot easier to just throw them on a trailer take them to the landfill or, or um, to the recycler and get rid of them. Now they're returnable and we have to have so many, we have to stack them up before they can come get them. I would hope to be able to have them outside behind a fence where nobody could see them on a dustless surface and comply that way. But I don't know that without a humongous building that we can get everything inside. and. Um, the property right beside us, DAV, if you look just to the west there, um, they go back another lot deep. And they're back past what we're asking for. And there's a lot of product out there that's not fenced off a lot of times. But I guess we got a complaint, and so that's what led this, led to this. But like I said, I was going to be here at some point because my vision was to get 909 rezoned so that we had the opportunity to expand and have a building, um, maybe not all the way across that backyard, but because of the setbacks in that, it, at least we could come into the yard uh, and 
and have adequate space. Tim? I think you just answered my question, but I'm going to ask it again. Uh, th that she ended her her comments with, and also prevent any more complaints from the neighbors. Specifically, complaints. Uh, what complaints have the neighbors had? There's only been one complaint, and it's that house that's in red, and that that's the only complaint we've had. Okay. I'm. Uh, it, I, I hope somebody from the Fairground Neighborhood Association is here because I'm in conflict. I'm looking at the neighborhood action plan versus this that's not in the neighborhood action plan, which is uh, on page three. It's number two of uh, additional applicable fall information. The proposed rezoning conflicts with the specific goals contained in the neighborhood plan as adopted by the city council in 1998. A goal listed on page 19 states the intent to limit the impact of commercial development along East University and in the residential property. Staff believes that the proposed rezoning to allow expansion of existing businesses along East University would negatively impact on adjoining residential uses. Furthermore, a goal listed on page 21 states the intent to preserve existing character in the areas of the neighborhood, which are single family re residential in character while uh, designating an appropriate amount of land for future commercial industrial growth. Uh, I guess what the Fairground Association at one point, they had a plan and the plan isn't at all recommended in here. Uh, like I said, I hope somebody is here because it's, while it would be argued that the proposed rezoning is necessary in achieving the goal, the design, uh, the designating an appropriate amount of land for commercial growth, staff believes that the current 180-foot depth of a C1 district zoning along the south side of East University is appropriate for commercial uses. Staff believes that extending the commercial zoning 50 feet further to the south to allow outdoor storage of materials and equipment would not preserve the residential character of the surrounding properties. I can't, uh, I can't uh, recall that we have any businesses that allows uh, products that, that can stay out overnight. Uh, I'm even looking at small businesses or, or uh, lawn or repair places. Everything is out during the day, but it's put away at night. It's, it's cleared up. And uh, the, I just keep, I, I see uh, I, I just your inventory being out all the time. I'm not sure if that creates well, the, a residential character of the surrounding properties. The, the exist 2715 has been there for since 1976 and they've had they couldn't get all the product inside. They've had on their property mowers in a uh, fence for 36 years uh, that you, we just can't get. We, f we fix a lot of mowers and we sell a lot of mowers and to try and get that, I mean, literally, if I can't have anything outside, I can't be there. My business is gone. Can, I, you, can you point to all your properties on this map? Yes. Yeah. This is 2715. This is where our, uh, our actual shop is. And as far as uh, showroom space, I have three or 400 feet, square feet. That's all I got. On the back side, I've got a shop that's 40 by 40 that we have a uh, lift and three benches for three mechanics that work back there. And everything that you see out front and to the side goes out every morning, comes back every night. I have about an hour and a half of man hours getting stuff out of there just so they can work every day. Um, right behind here, Right along the red, um, for 30 some years, has been a, a fenced in area where we've had mowers park that we have serviced, performed that work on. And I bought the business, obviously assuming that I could operate that way. Um, we, we doubled the business in three years, so now all of a sudden, the space that was already cramped isn't big enough. 
I purchased this space, which is 913. Um, and we sell about 350 riders a year for, or we sold about 350 riders a year for five or six years there. The previous owner sold about 50 to 60. And some days you'll sell three or four of the same model. And I don't have any other place to have them, and I can't sell them if they're not there. And so we've had created mowers in this space for, I don't know, six, seven years. As soon as we bought it from Kenner, it was zone commercial. Um, I had no idea I couldn't have them there up until this year. But that's where our staging area is. That's where when we sell one, we immediately get another one out of a crate. And um, as far as the, the, the fairground action plan, the, the fairground action plan, you know, it does say limiting impact while designating appropriate, appropriate amount of land for commercial growth. Well, it's pretty subjective to what appropriate amount of land is. It's also, um, we're only asking for 50 foot more. You got the DAV there that's got 100 foot more. It's right next to us. Out in front to the, to the uh, east, you've got a gigantic sign from Clear Channel uh, with, a clear, with, a, with an empty lot. And, you know, I, I brought pictures for the surrounding houses, but this is a rental area. This is... Jeff, you understand that even if you get the zoning today, you're going to have to go before the Board of Adjustment because you can't have outside storage. I do, I do understand that, but it, I guess if that fails, I still have a decision whether or not I can get a build, whether I can find the funds to get a building put up and still be there. You know, if, if they both fail, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got a business that I bought that I can't operate like I thought I could. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I'd like to um, raise the point of the, D the DAV. Um, when you're coming down East University driving to the east, um, to the west of the DAV building, they have an open area that has a chain link fence <clears throat> that, ha that is more visually intrusive than most anything you're going to see on East University Avenue, in, in my opinion. Um, and um, my, my question is that um, if, if the applicant is interested in complying with what the Neighborhood Association has asked for a screen or possibly a privacy fence, I'd like to ask the, um, the applicant what he intends, uh, how he envisions that amenity to be and if it would prevent the visual intrusion that the DAV store has. Yeah, right now I have privacy fence all along here and there's just a small section between this red area which is from about this corner to here that is not privacy there's a privacy fence all the way across the proposed property matter of fact i can show you that This picture here is to the south of the proposed property. It's kind of hard to see, but there already is a privacy fence across the back there. I probably got a hundred feet of privacy fence that I need to run, and you won't be able to see any of the product that's back there. Um, so it's it, it wouldn't take a lot of money or a lot of time to uh, to do what they're asking. And you'd be willing to do that? Yeah, I'm very willing to do that. Mr. Chair? Mark, we see? Oh, um, I have a question on, normally I support the neighborhood plan wholeheartedly, but I see this plan was written 14 years ago, and given the fact, I guess this is a staff question, do you know if that plan's been updated or not? No. There have been no I, I'm the one that did the plan with them. Okay. So. I remember that. It's never been <laughs> uh, updated. It, and it, no, and just so you know, the neighborhood uh, process, I think we are now starting to go back and revisit some yeah, of those, we, but we're just at the beginning stage of that. Right. But, but Fairground, there may, may have been some incremental amendments to the future land use in the in 
scattered portions of the neighborhood, but in terms of any comprehensive approach to updating that, no. Well, well the, my, my question is because neighborhood plans were developed by neighborhood leaders, and if the plan was developed 15 years ago, and now we have a president who maybe didn't even live in the neighborhood then saying that the neighborhood now supports it. So if the plan hasn't been updated, maybe the neighborhood vision has changed a little bit. That could be, and I mean, this came up when you were looking at Arnie DeWitt's, mm -hmm. you know, what's the, right. I think you have to kind of take that into yeah. consideration that a plan is a, what it is. Um, and we, we're pointing out that there's a number of things where it looks to be contrary. Um, that doesn't mean there aren't some things that might support it as well. But one of the things you need to understand, CJ, and obviously I live on that side of town, the whole purpose behind a lot of that was to upgrade university. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was the impact of the neighborhood plan was to try and upgrade university from similar situation with 14th Street, mm -hmm. uh, with some of our major arteries, and they're trying to do that. And frankly, that has not come to pass even with the plan in place. If I could also, I, I think um, if this request were in and the building were being proposed to be constructed, staff would probably look at that a little differently in, in a request to amend the comp plan. I'll, I'll point out that on the uh, storage units that Arnie DeWitt proposed, originally he came in with a proposal for outdoor storage and we told him right at the beginning that wasn't appropriate an appropriate extension of his of his storage business into the residential neighborhood. We told him it all, you know, any storage of boats, RVs, whatever needed to be within a building. And then he came in with a proposal that was all buildings on the property. Well, and I we think did the support difference that. between that so, and this is that Arnie was out of compliance on some other things and <clears throat> on grading and tree removals. And I mean, there was a, this. Well, this a side is a zoning deal. enforcement issue also. So it is, but it's, we didn't hear it's a very paralleled parallel discussion outside storage so okay. my point being that that if it were an enclosed building we would probably look at it very similar to the way we process the application for the uh, Arnie DeWitt proposal but given that it's outdoor storage we did have a question or a concern about it being compatible with the neighborhood so. any other questions have anything else I would once again like to look at the pictures that the city took just around his property, just again to try to get the feel of how it would look if I was a neighbor. Just, uh, yeah, I can take, I don't have the ones that he has from behind, um, but we have. Yeah, I, I thought I saw, I saw, I, I thought I saw land, landscaping bricks or, okay, that's the front. Well, part of the landscaping bricks that you see is because they just got done. Re I don't know if, how many of you have noticed. I just re-landscaped out front. The, the whole front on that corner is uh, got a nice retaining wall and boulders, and I'm just getting ready to sod it. And yeah. Is there is there a setback for for university? Was that in there? Um. See, I Any just, site plan would have a standard on the East University uh, streetscape or design guidelines with regard to the sidewalk, but um, until he drives an actual site plan with an improvement like a building addition, that won't be triggered. The, the one thing to keep in mind, too, is the day these pictures were taken was the height of busy season. <laughs> this was... April, the grass started growing in March this year, and um, that's as bad as it. That's as bad as it looks. There's there, there's nothing out there like that now. So. Okay. Anything else? Uh, well, I got one last thing, I guess. I was reviewing the community character concept for myself last night, and, and uh, part of the 2020 community character plan. It, it, you know, a, the big part of that is to keep people in Des Moines. As I, as I read that and seen the trends that they're trying to avoid, they want to keep people in Des Moines. And by doing so, uh, if they get a negative perception, they can't, in my case, if I can't operate like I need to, I got to move somewhere or I just got to close the doors. Well, your tax base declines, you have declining revenues. Right now, I'm in the revitalization cycle. 
I've done landscaping out front. I've changed the whole way that front corner looks. Um, and if you drive down University, I don't think you'll miss it. I, I'm getting ready to put sod down there next week. But that's the nicest piece of landscaping as you drive down University between A and the fairground. Besides A, which <laughs> I've always done a very nice job. But, but I'm trying to clean it up. I want a good image to build our business, to compete with the box stores, to compete with what we're competing with. You need to look like you're in business and, and you're, you're growing and not going. That is all that I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the application? In favor of the application, please come forward. Seeing none, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the application? Please come forward. Likewise, seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. We have a motion. Joanne? I'm inclined to move for the applicant um, because he uh, does have the neighborhood association's blessing. Um, and the fact that his property is right across the street from another commercial enterprise that extends further down than his own, I don't see how it would be that um, jarring for him to add only 50 feet, uh, not much more than the length of this room. So I, I really, I would, I'm inclined to um, move for the applicant. Okay. Would you make that motion subject to the outdoor storage being screened as was asked by the neighborhood? Yes, I would add the screening. And staff, could, is there a standard then that applies to the design of the screening? Be a six foot wood fence. Yeah, if this was in a... Mr. Chair, if this was in like an M1 district where we do allow the outdoor storage, there would be a screening standard from any residential property that we would. Eric, so we understand clearly just because we're approving this doesn't mean that he can store stuff outside. It's still going to be a violation. He'll still need relief for that, yeah. He's still going to But I would it. frame it as if there was a condition, it would say any outdoor storage that may be permitted. Uh, that way you're, you're, not, you're not necessarily condoning outdoor storage with the rezoning itself, but indicating that should it be permitted that you would require the, the screening. Can we call it seasonal with that? If you, I, I'm not saying you have to call it anything. I'm just suggesting that you frame it or word it in such a way that you're not making the assumption there's outdoor storage, but rather if there's mm -hmm. permitted outdoor storage at some point that it would have that screening. No slats and oh, absolutely not. What you say? Oh, come on, that's your favorite. No slats, no slats and chains. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. A wooden I fence, in other words, right? Okay. I would second. Okay, we got a second. You have a second? Yep. Thank you. Any discussion? Any questions? Yeah. So, I'm sorry. We're. we're <laughs> Are you saying that we're going to deny staff? You're, you're, yeah. okay. you're going to approve. approve. You're going to recommend approval. But we're going to break it down because, first yes. of all, we have to determine whether or not it's the proposed amendments in conformance with the 2020 community character plan, which staff says it's not, and then we then we amend. Okay. So we'll bring up the first motion first. All those uh, who believe that it is not in conformance with the 2020 community character plan, please signify by raising your right hand. Okay, acclamation. All right. Now bringing, well, I think we're going to do uh, uh, B and C together. Uh, we're going to amend the 2020 community character plan and rezone to C1. Does everybody understand that? That's the motion? Okay, and with your proviso of screening. Subject to the following condition. Right, the condition would be, it would have to be wooden fence. As opposed to Greg's favorite, which are slats and <laughs> the screening of any outdoor storage that is permitted, they'd have to support that with a wooden fence. Right. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Oh, one against, one opposite. Tim. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else for the good of the group? By the way, it passes. I want to make sure I make that clear. Yeah. Anything else for the good of the group? Seeing none, seeing none, we're adjourned. <laughs>